Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. I need a new bench for my workshop for an up and coming project. Now I need this bench to be 1.6 meters wide and 1.6 meters deep. Now I've decided that I was just going to make it out of some 4x2 construction grade timber with an 18 millimeter MDF top. So let's prep the 4x2 and then we can start making the bench. Okay, now that I have the 4B2s machined up, I have cut seven lengths, 1.6 meters long, and as I have them laid out on the bench here, I have five for the cross members that will be the top, and I have two runners that are going to connect the five cross members together. Now the simplest thing to do, it'd be get your two runner boards and just screw them on the ends of your cross members and make up your frame that way. Now, I normally don't do things the simple way, but I always have a reason for not doing it that way. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to half lap the runners and the cross members together, so that once they're together, they're all flush. So not only are the cross members supporting the top, but the two runners will also be supporting the top. And that also gives me the opportunity to narrow in the two runners from the sides so that instead of having the legs 1.6 meters apart i can reduce the legs in to a meter apart so that will give the less opportunity for the bench to sag in the middle so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark my five half lap joints on my two runners and the two half lap joints on the cross members and i'm going to notch them out using the panel saw
Okay, now that the half laps are done, I also added a little bevel on the bottom corner of all the pieces to make up the bench. And I have gone ahead and just in the two runners, I have bored a hole in the center of each half lap so that I can actually screw that joint together. The one thing I would like to state at this stage is that the runner, it's important that once the bench is made, that the runner is in this position so that your notches for your half laps are actually caught in the top of the runners. Because once you put your piece in here, you still have the same strength in the 4x2. If you have it done and your notches are that way in your two runners, you're actually reducing the strength of the runner to just this portion, which is half the strength of the wood. So it's important that once you go to put it together, that you're putting it together, that the notch in the runners is facing upwards. Now, this, the reason I'm saying this is because I am putting this together on the bench upside down, so that when I put it, it'll look like the bench is going together with the notches down, but actually, they're actually going to be up because I'm doing it upside down. The other thing is, it's important when you're putting this together like this, to put it together on a level surface. Now this bench that I'm using in the whole time in the workshop is perfectly level in all directions. Now if you put this together on an unlevel surface, you will create a twist into the bench that you're going to find it very hard to remove the twist back out of the bench. But if you put the bench together on a level surface, there should be no twist and so you have no twist to eliminate. I hope that makes sense. To glue this together, I am going to be using construction adhesive. Now, I'm using construction adhesive over ordinary wood glue purely because it's a little bit more flexible in the joint and is less inclined for the glue joint to actually crack, especially with the change in climate between winter and summer here in Ireland, that there will be a movement in the wood and the construction adhesive will be a little bit less likely to break in the workshop conditions. The construction adhesive that I'm going to be using in this project is from the very same company that makes the wood glue that I've been using in previous projects, and that's Gary's Glue. And in, they're based in Dublin, in here in Ireland, and they do a full range of wood glues between the D3, the D4, and they even do a polyurethane glue. And they also do white, and now this new product, which is clear construction adhesive. Now, I'm not getting paid to say anything about them. I've been using these prod products for a while and I found them to be every bit as good as any other product I've used during the years. So I'll leave a link to the website so if anyone wants to check it out to see what the range are. Uh, they're competitively priced. So this is what I'm going to be using for this project. So maybe you might give it a consideration if you are actually planning the project yourselves.
So next up is adding legs to the bench. Now for this, it's just again, a bit of 4 by 2 Now I am going to put these at a slight angle to both ends, because I believe that a leg that's dead straight is more inclined to rock, where an angled leg is a little bit more solid, especially when you stay it. So I have beveled one end at 10 degrees, and to get the length of the leg, I'm just going to put that roughly in place and clamp it. And now you just measure from what will be the top of the bench up the height that you want the bench. Now I am making this bench 838 millimeters high, so I am marking 820 on the leg, so that I know that when I cut that at 10 degrees, that is the exact length I want. Now, when I'm cutting these on the saw, I'm also going to add another half lap joint in the four legs for a stretcher between the two legs, approximately 150 millimeters up from the bottom. And I am going to add a little half lap on the top of the four legs where it sits on the runner of the top. And that's just to add a little bit more support to stop it from rocking. So you're not depending just purely on the glue and a couple of screws, that you actually have a shoulder sitting there, which adds a little bit more strength. For the few minutes it takes, it's an awful lot better to do it now than be sorry you didn't do it when the bench is starting to rock on you in years to come. So we'll go to the saw, we'll cut these to length, and we'll notch out the two half laps that we're wanting to do. Okay, with the leg now machined, I have my notch here for my bottom rail or my stretcher between both legs, and I have my housing here to let the leg sit over the runner on the top of the bench. And that will line it up so you get the perfect angle without having to set up jigs and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this up against the last cross member. I'm gonna mark back the width of the leg and that is where I am going to position the leg and I'm going to clamp that in place temporarily. The next thing I want to do before I progress any further is I want to actually mark and cut the braces for the legs. Now it's an awful lot simpler to do this now than waiting until it's all together because you'll find that once it's all together you're working with different compound angles and it's just a little bit trickier to mark. It's not impossible, but it's just a little bit trickier to mark it out. It's an awful lot simpler to mark it out now when you don't have the rail in your way. So I'll bring you in a bit closer and I'll show you how I position it and how I mark it out. Okay, to mark this, the first thing you need to realize is because this is at an angle, this is the reference point you're going to be wanting once you have the stay in place so that bottom edge of the stay 
is actually hitting that corner once it's notched out. But because we're at an angle, to line this up, you need to use a square from the top edge of the leg and square that up to there. So now once you start to line up your leg, I line it up dead on the corner there, the corner of the timber on the inside corner of the cross member. And then you line that up with the line that you've put there on the bottom edge of the notch. Like that, and just clamp that in place. And all you need to do then, on this end, is use a square or a straight edge and carry the edge of the cross member up. And I like to use just an off coat of the same size block and mark across. So we're removing this timber here. Once I've that removed, I'll bring it back, I'll drop it into place, and then I'll be able to mark the cutout that's here. Okay, with that cut, as you can see, now I will be trimming this back to half the thickness of the rail so that the other stay can meet into it. But once I drop that in there, it's dead tight that way. It is now sitting perfectly on the bottom edge of the notch that's in this. So all I need to do is get my pen and trace around. And as you can see, that's the cutout that I need. That's the point I was referencing to try and get this point. That's why I carried that up. Once I moved it up, it'll drop down right. So I'll cut that now and I'll bring it back and we'll offer it back up to this again. And hopefully now you can see that that sits in perfectly in the notch. So if I have my rail, it'll pop in like that, and that is scribed right around it, perfect fit, top and bottom. So I'm, going, I'm putting four of these in it because the legs are fairly wide apart. I'm actually going to put four of these, two on either side, and I'm going to use this now as the template to make the other three. And then I just need to cut the two stretchers to go across the legs. And to do that, I'm going to clamp the other one in place temporarily as well, so that I can measure from the outside to the outside of both legs so that I can cut that exactly the correct length. With everything now cut out, I went ahead and I have pre-bored for all the screws and I marked out where the stays to the legs are going to be going and I've bored for those as well. So now it's just a case of more construction adhesive in all the joints and screw it together.
Okay, that's one end now assembled. So I'm going to crack on and I'm going to do the other end and we'll be back then to start putting the top on it. Okay, now I have it screwed together and I have it laid on the floor off the bench. So I just thought I would give a quick run around before I put the top on where you can actually see how it all fitted together when it's in the upright position. So as you can see, with the stays and the legs and the rails, that is going to be one very sturdy bench. As I said at the beginning, I am going to be using some 18 millimeter MDF to make the top for this bench. Now, because the bench is 1.6 meters square, it's not possible to do it all in one complete piece. So there is going to be some joints in it. So I utilized some off cuts of 18 mil MDF that I had here, and I have already cut those to fit on the top. Now I have one joint running across the center across member here, and then there's going to be one joint to one side on that half of the bench. I would sometimes use construction adhesive to bond the MDF to the frame, but because I might want to remove uh, a panel or a bit of the top at a later stage to do different things with the bench, I'm not going to glue the top down to the frame. It'll just make it easier to remove a section or the whole top if I want to at a later date. Now, I've already, like I said, I've already pre-fitted them. I've bored them uh, for screws, and I'm just going to be laying it on and screwing it down. And there it is, one very big but very strong bench for me to use in my workshop. So if you like this video, maybe you'd consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see what I'm going to use this bench for, maybe you'd consider subscribing so you won't miss out on that. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.